Welcome. I'll be covering some of the enhancements and fixes made to both the IFC and the SDS2 Connect Transfer XML. Please note the versions that the fixes are in, since some releases may not be available at the time this video was created. The first issue that I will cover is the incorrect rotation of members in the model when the IFC is used to import the members as individual native IFC members, and not as a reference model. This issue began in the 7.3 versions and in the early 2015 versions. The Revit model that I'm using has been graciously contributed by Ascension Group Architects, Latent Construction, and Structural Detailing out of Tennessee. In Revit, I have hidden all the elements that I do not want to have exported in the IFC file by using a combination of visibility graphics and a hide by selection. We can see that the top of the steel beams are to be at an elevation of 16 foot 2 and 3 quarters. This is taken from the project base point, which coincides with the project internal origin or the model's world coordinate system, WCS. I have also installed the Autodesk plugin for exporting IFC. This is not absolutely required for what we're going to accomplish, but here's the address if you are interested. I will set the export the current view or only elements visible in the view. I am going to import the IFC file that we created from Revit into the current version of 7336. And by the way, the result will be the same in version 2015.20. After process, and then turning the model to solids, it'll appear as if the members are in the correct location. But after further investigation, we find that the member line is located incorrectly at elevation 14, 9, and 1 16th, the bottom of the main material. And the main material is rotated 180 degrees. In the version 7.3.3.7 and version 2015.24, we can see that this import issue with the IFC has now been fixed. On a side note, I would like to point out that the main materials currently in the model are generated from the IFC file. Notice the gap here at the shear tab. To get the main materials to be intelligent SDS2 materials, you can change the material from user to system using either the change options or through the member edit. Also, notice what happens if I delete the main material, mark it for process, and then solidify. For the next IFC enhancement, as of version 7336 and up and 2015-20 and up, the user now has the ability to export custom properties within the IFC. I'm going to add in a value into this member's approval comment. Then export the IFC. We see the option to export custom properties in the properties button. When the IFC is imported into Navisworks, Revit, Tecla BIM site, or any other collaborative modeling software, you'll see only the properties that do not have a blank field or are not checked. Here is the comment that I added. You may notice some properties that were not set appearing. This is because even though they appear to be a Boolean, in this flavor, the property schemas were created as a string field with a false value for defaults. Since we're on the topic of custom properties being exported in the IFC, 
In version 2016, you'll be able to set in the schema entry, as seen here, whether the custom properties will be exportable. This gives you yet another level of control. In version 2015.26, which does require a project convert from previous 2015 versions, you have the ability to export the grids or axes. Using display options, we can see the primary, secondary, dimension, and placement only grids. With this model, there are also two infinite grids. One grid is within 10 foot of the members indicated as infinite. The other is greater than 10 feet from the members or material. Now I will export the IFC. Notice the option to export the grids. Here is the IFC imported into Revit 2015. SDS2 will not export any placement only grids, nor will any infinite grids that are outside of the model by greater than 10 foot be exported. Note that finite grids that are greater than 10 foot from the model are exported. We can also see the curved grid is there. Note that the grid selection or display option visibility does not affect the export. Now that we see what is and is not exported, I will open Tecla BIM site. Notice the result is the same as Revit, excluding the curved grid, which is not read in. In Navisworks 2016, notice that the grid bubbles and annotations are not read in. But I'd like to point out, as you have seen from Revit, the grid data is there. Time to change the topic from IFC to SDS2 Connect Transfer also known as SDS2 Round Trip Plugin for Revit. I'm going to cover a major enhancement to the export of the Revit model to SDS2 between Revit 2014 and 2015 and up. Before I dive into this change, I would like to mention that the SDS2 Connect Transfer plugin is absolutely free and has been since its inception. All you need to do is download the SDS2 Connect 30-day free trial. You don't even need to activate it since activation is only for using the connection portion in Revit. Once the trial runs out, you'll still have the ability to use the Connect Transfer. To download the SDS2 Connect Transfer for Revit 2015 and below, go to the sds2connect.com trial website. Fill in the name and email, you don't even need a real name and address, then select the Revit version. For the SDS2 Connect XML transfer for Revit 2016, it has become even easier. Go to sds2.com, select Solutions, and about dead center of the screen, you'll see a link in a purple box to download 2016 Round Trip, which is the XML transfer plugin. Before we begin, we need to cover some basic points. First, SDS2, like many other 3D modeling programs, only has one immovable world coordinate system. This is what most people call the origin, or 0, 0, 0. Again, this point cannot be moved. If I place a column 10 feet away from this point, it stays 10 foot away unless I move the column. In Revit, this is not the case. Revit does have a world coordinate system, WCS, like all other modeling systems, it is called the Project Internal Origin, which is immovable and for the most part hidden from the user. But Revit has other origin points, like the user coordinates of the old AutoCAD days. These points are named the Project Base Point, which can be seen and moved, as well as the Survey Point and the Shared Origin. Not to get too deep into this, but for this demonstration, you'll need to be aware of these coordinate systems especially the project internal origin and the project base point. I have opened up the previous Revit model we were using earlier with the floor at elevation 16 foot 2 and 3 quarters in Revit version 2014. My Connect plugin has already been installed. Before I go further, I would like to mention that the SDS2 Connect or Roundtrip plugin 
only exports and imports beams, columns, and braces. There are other videos that cover this more in depth, and this is not our current focus. Currently, we do not see the project base point, which is represented as a circle with an X, or the survey point, indicated as a triangle with a plus sign. And in 2014, only those with special powers can see the project internal point. I'm going to show this project base point using visibility graphics. Now I'm going to go ahead and show the survey point. I'm going to go ahead and leave only the project base point visible. When I double click on the project base point, we can see the north, south, east, west, elevation, and rotation all at zero and a locked paperclip. I'll come back to the paperclip later. For your information, for this project, the project base point and the project internal origin happen to be at the same location. I am now going to export some selected members, leaving all the points at the same locations. I will name this file 2014 with project base point 0. Next, I will remove the paperclip lock and move the project base point to elevation negative 100 foot 0. Now, when we verify the floor and low beams, we see that the elevation is now at 116 foot 2 and 3 quarters to the project base point. Between you and I, it is important to note that the internal project origin has not changed, nor the survey point for that matter. Time to do an export again and name this one 2014 with project base point at negative 100, 0. While we're at it, I'll also export an IFC file. In SDS273, or in this case 2015, I'll import the first file with the zero elevation for the project base point. Answer yes to associate this project for the round tripping and no to overriding the setup. Process and create solids. We can see the steel is at the correct elevation of 16 foot 2 and 3 quarters. Let's go ahead and add in the IFC file as a reference model. We can see that all is good and everything's in the same location. I will delete the members for the next Revit import of the model where the project base point was moved to negative 100. Let's go ahead and import this negative 100 file from Revit. Let's go ahead and turn on that same reference drawing that we brought in before. And we can see that there's no difference. That is because with SDS2 Connect Transfer in Revit version 2014, the project internal origin is used and not the project base point for the XML export.
Now I'll perform the same export operations in Revit version 2015. This time, I will only export the project base point at elevation negative 100 and the IFC file. Notice how I can go in and right click and move the project base point back to the startup or internal project origin point. This is new to Revit 2015. I'll undo back to elevation negative 100 for the project base point. Time to export my XML file. I prefer to use the selected option. Name it 2015. Then let's finish this off by exporting the IFC file. Back in SDS2, after I import this new 2015 XML file, which used the negative 100 foot project base point, we will see that the elevation for the steel is at elevation 116 2 and 3 quarters. This confirms that in Revit 2015 and up, the SDS2 Connect plugin is now using for export the project base point and not the project internal origin. This is great, but when I import the IFC, we'll now see that the IFC from Revit in version 2014, 15, and 16 are exported from the project internal origin, not the project base point. At least, that's what I've found to this point. I'm not aware of any way to currently change this, but I am open to any suggestions. This is easy enough to fix. Just translate the IFC into the correct position. Be aware, when you export your IFC model back into Revit, you will also have to translate the model back to the original position, since the IFC import into Revit also uses the project internal origin. Note that I have the Export Autodesk IFC compatible option checked. We now see this model imported back into Revit. This concludes this video.